stool. Hey guys, uh, lockdown day four, I think it is. Over the last year, you've watched me building my family home on the section nobody wanted. Let me tell you about how it almost never began. It involves a shoe, uh, my foot, and a lawnmower. You can see where this is going, right? What do you reckon, Sam? Do we like show them the full on gore of it? Okay, what I'm gonna do, we're gonna put the photos of the blood cut and all of that stuff right at the end. So after literally a year of due diligence, we decided to put the section nobody wanted under offer. And one of my very first jobs was to mow the lawn. Uh, morning, my very first job, joy to the world, I get to mow the lawns. Um, there's quite a few of them, it's quite long, it's gonna take a while. <laughs> You see, it was overgrown, it was a mess. We needed to work out where to start. The lawyer called me at one o'clock in the afternoon and said, Josh, great news, the sale's gone through. Literally half an hour later, I was on site, mower in hand, mowing the grass. My very first job, very first day of owning the section nobody wanted. One of the reasons it's the section nobody wanted is that it's long, skinny, and has a moderate slope on it. And the slope goes two ways as well. It goes up and then it cuts across at the top. And that's important. That little piece there is what we'll need to talk about later. Always going to plan. You can see in this video here, I was working across the slope of the hill. I was wearing shoes that I use for trail running. I did the plane that goes that way and had mowed all the way to the top. Now I needed to work on this side bank here. Again, my approach was to work across the bank. The crazy thing is I mowed 95% of the lawn and then me being an overachiever, wanted to get as much as I could and make it as mint as I could. I was working on the very last corner. Before we go any further, it's important to note that the mower was on the highest setting because of the grass being so long and I didn't have a catcher attached. It's fair to say there was a solid amount of space between the mower and the grass. So I get to the very last corner and I go across and I push the mower and all of a sudden my feet slip out from under me. The mower goes down and hits a tree stump and stops. And then Josh and his foot come sliding along under the mower and gets caught. I hear this, you know, the sound when you mow, insert mowing sounds here. The noise when you mow over, run over a stick or something other than grass. Heard that sound, instant pain, enough to make me want to faint. I was on site by myself, phone was in the car, there was no one around. I had to hobble to the car. I made the decision to drive to my in-laws just around the corner, got in the driveway, sat there, tooted on the horn, laid down in their entranceway. They came out, wrapped up my foot. So my father-in-law came out, off to hospital, obviously. Uh, it was a little bit deeper than the old homemade first aid kits could handle. He dropped me at the door and I hobbled in to accident and emergency. So you'd think a guy hobbling in with a bleeding foot would um, be quite urgent to address, right? Not me, they made me wait over there in a seat. Yo, I've just walked into the hospital with a bleeding toe dripping blood everywhere and um, they made me sit awkwardly in this chair while they cleaned it up and dressed it in the middle of the waiting room. Uh, after about half an hour, they came out and I thought, great, this is my time to be seen. No, they told me off for dripping blood on the floor and we propped my foot up. There was a guy sitting opposite me in some seats and I felt so sorry for him. He was literally dry retching, looking at the blood on my foot. So I lay down for, for about an hour. I found two seats and then an armrest and then two seats. I awkwardly put my back in one seat and then cocking my knee over the other armrest and like basically I took up four armrests and just laid there. I'm pretty sure I watched YouTube videos. So if you're in hospital right now, this is probably a really good moment to click subscribe to my channel because I tell you what, you're gonna need some entertainment for a while. Finally, the nurse comes over, brings me a wheelchair, takes me behind the double doors, we go and get seen. In the lawns, and I was on a hill, and I slipped, the lawnmower was below me, and then um, I obviously fell down and my foot went under. Okay, it's hour one and I have now moved to a bed. Just getting wheeled in the wheelchair has caused it to start bleeding through the bandage.
I meet the doctor and he does a quick diagnosis. Lawnmower versus foot. And it's clear that the lawnmower has won. The heat goes for a bit of an expiration around in my toe, pulling open the skin, and I could actually feel his set of tweezers bouncing against my bone. Very quickly, he works out that there is shoe and grass embedded in under the skin down into the toe knuckle. That means it's highly likely it's gonna be surgery. So off to another water I go, after him cleaning it out as good as he can. Do you think it's most of the like important stuff? Yeah, I think so. They take x-rays on the way. Get that x-ray in. Can we just gently rewrap, not, not a lot, just so that the, the bony detail doesn't get obscured by the dressing on the x-ray? I have sliced a portion of my toe off and there's a tiny little break in there. They said, otherwise, it's pretty good. Everything else is still there. Okay, hour three, still waiting. Just had an x-ray, I think it's all good. Uh, luckily, I brought a book. broken bone under an open wound and you always have to be a bit careful with that mm. so I've asked the orthopedic reg to come and look at it mm -hmm. so he'll look at it he's gonna take your dressing down and decide what the best treatment is mm -hmm. okay so that's just what we're waiting for now okay it's hour four chocolate milk and Katie okay hour five it's starting to wear thin and I'm still just waiting here not much is happening. That way. Alright, uh, that's my surgeon. It's infection of the bone, or of the joint. Yeah. Um, both of which would be pretty serious. Uh, and we want you to keep your toe. Yeah. Um, I had to stay the night. This is hour eight. It's five in the morning. Just got some more painkillers and antibiotics. Put these back on. And I get surgery the next day. That morning the surgeon comes in and they mark my toe with this big arrow that you'll see in this photo here. And the whole purpose of that is to make sure that they don't operate on the wrong toe. I thought it was pretty obvious, but I'm glad they went out of their way to make sure it was even more obvious that this side of my foot is cut and this side of my foot isn't. So have the surgery. I vividly remember getting wheeled into the surgical room. I remember all those people go to get put to sleep. I remember waking up, I was still high on anesthetics and I was babbling away to the nurse. I remember that I was talking to her and I remember that she was looking at me and engaging with me, but I have no idea what I said to her at all. It's hour 24 and I just got out of surgery. How are you doing? Uh, a bit groggy. A bit groggy. Hungover. Oh. Well, you came in last night, is that right? Yeah, 24 hours ago. How's the pain? Uh, to, I can't even feel it, to be honest. Next problem is that I had a reaction to the painkillers that they put me on. And I remember waking up in my hospital bed in a cold sweat and having to literally like hobble, hop to the bathroom and who pretty much uh, was not a good feeling. I just had this yuck chemical feeling all over me. But apparently my toe was fine. It was stitched up and uh, everything was good. So can't complain about that. Yo, it's 2 a.m. and I can't sleep. See if you can listen why. Hospital food was great, mates, friends, family visited. What was really cute was that Levi, my three and a half year old at the time, brought me one of his toy cars. You know, he obviously wanted me to have something to, to play with while I was in hospital and I thought it was so cute that he th thought of me that way. So I was in hospital for another couple of days. Basically they wanted to check that there was no infection spreading up my leg. Morning is day two, eight, eight hours to go. After they made the call that that was all good, I got to go home. I'm back home in bed. That's 
48 hours exactly. And I got to wear what's called a moon boot, or um, it's got a real technical name that my nurse friend told me, but basically everyone knows it as a moon boot. For the next four weeks, I was on bed rest, had to keep my foot up, I had to keep my feet still so I didn't like aggravate the injury. So I basically just sat around eating pies, donuts, drinking coffee, reading books and writing my thoughts down. I managed to put together and edit a few videos over that time. While I was in hospital, for the most part, the nurses were an amazing, amazing team. Great stay at Hotel Hut Hospital. Toe vs Lawnmower is just one of the many issues of the section nobody wanted and the story of taking a gnarly tough site right through to completion. I think one of the things is the doctor said in terms of foot versus lawnmower, it's one of the best cases they've seen. Again, when I do something, I like to do it well. So even when I mow my own toe with a lawnmower, I like to be in the top quarter of uh, toe cases. And the thing is, the blade went this way here instead of this way here, meaning that I was fortunate to like slice into my toe, not slice across my toe. If you're ever going to mow the lawns, you, A, you should probably wear steel caps, although it's important to note a steel cap wouldn't have saved me. The other thing is, if you're ever going to cut your toe with a lawnmower, make sure you go parallel with your foot for the best chances of survival. You'll be pleased to know that I've still got all my toes and that I also have not really had any ongoing issues. I was back on site literally four weeks later. The first couple of weeks was tough and the only thing I could wear was the gum boots because of the needing the space to get around the bandaging and the swelling of my foot and all that. But like realistically, I had no choice but to get stuck into it. It probably took me about three months to get back into running. Like that period of being off your feet and then struggling to get back into work. I remember I'd work a long day and I'd go home and it would just ache all day. And it still aches in the cold as well. But in the scheme of things, don't get me wrong, I feel very blessed to come away from an accident like that with such a minor injury. Right, it's time to go and mow the lawns. Um, get that extra in. Can we just gently rewrap, not not a lot, just so that the, the bony detail doesn't get obscured by the dressing on the x-ray? Mm -hmm. 